2,000 miles from Tanzania to the Horn of Africa. Two weeks non-stop sailing in dangerous seas where tales of piracy and terror converge. But hopefully we'll guide our family gently through these waters and arrive safe and sound and leave legend and tragedy far behind in our wake. The first couple of days consisted of rain and waves on the beam, which made for a really rough ride. But the wind was consistent at about 20 knots, so we made really good time. But on the third day, the wind shifted and things started to calm down. Well, we're, we're about 250 miles off the coast of Somalia. Mogadishu is exactly 250 something miles that away. And uh, this is the coastline that everybody's leery of, very, very conservative about very quiet out here. We hadn't seen hardly any cargo ships, hadn't seen hardly any anything, and that's probably because they just quit sailing down through here because of all the piracy. But piracy is is, is going going down here, but what's going up here is religious extremism. There's a Al-Qaeda group operating out of Mogadishu and, and the coast of Somalia called, I think, El, El Shabbat or something like that, and uh, that's a real threat. So we're just keeping our eyes peeled out here. We've got our, we're running dark on all of our stuff. We're not broadcasting and we're keeping a vigil on watch. I mean, we're scanning out here for skiffs, fast moving skiffs all the time. Another, about another 10 days out here and we should be out of the extreme danger zone and closer to military support if we needed military support once we get up around the, the Horn of Africa and Sakutra. Passage making is typically non-eventful, especially when we pick a good weather window and the sailing is easy. This time, the only thing different is the political and religious unrest at the port nearest to us, which is Somalia, about 300 nautical miles away. So if we were to have an emergency, we would most likely head east to the Seychelles Islands, which are only about 370 miles away, as opposed to risking sailing in Somalian waters. On Kate's third night shift, she noticed a blob on the radar, which could have been a squall or a boat traveling dark without AIS. So we tracked it for several minutes, and at first it appeared to be intercepting our route, but then after about 30 minutes, it dissipated, so it was probably just a light squall. As it's pitch black at night when there's no moon out, it's impossible to see with the naked eye. So we rely on our radar to spot any movement nearby. Day four or something like that. And uh, Finn had to say goodbye to a special someone back in Dar es Salaam. Jasmine, I miss you. Aww. He doesn't. Little light shine through the window. You know, Mom just pointed this out. My first girlfriend was Lily. Finn's first girlfriend is Jasmine. Those are two uh, Jasmine flowers. Flowers. Color, right? Oh my gosh. So it, it, the correlation is ridiculous, and there must be something done about this. Wait, sing your song together. So Finn's girlfriend's name is Jasmine. What is, what is, is. So what's the plan now as you left? Aww. Yeah, are you guys doing long distance, or what's, what's the word? We don't know. It's a waiting game. We're still figuring it out. It's a waiting game. Aww. All right, let's see what you got. All right.
Jasmine. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, it's a cargo ship, 180 meters in length. It's going the opposite direction of us. Jasmine's tracking you down. Wait, really? She's out here on a cargo ship. I'll show you. Come here. Okay, so there, there, she's out there on that ship. Yeah? See, yeah, I've got marking on the deal. Look at that. Pam Jasmine. Pam Jasmine. 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 Oh, she's out there. Come here. <laughs> Don't crash into us. All right, they're gonna drop the main, they're gonna roll in the screecher, drop the main, and put the screecher back out so we can get ready for night, night watch. It's a big one. Getting ready to take a nap. Boys, y'all go to sleep for night shift? Yes, I do. Kate usually wears the watch. We have a watch. We all wear it. That syncs to my phone, yes. And they all wear the watch so that if they fall off, my phone makes them a big alarm sound. We got the Olas tag on. We're about to go test it. Ah, okay, here he goes. Ah, ah. Okay. Nothing's happening on your phone, though. Oh, there yeah. goes the phone. Right after. Okay, right. look at that. Well, I'm going to bed. We'll check back in with y'all later. Excellent. Catch Sounds good. Catch y'all on the next set. Right. Done the thing. Let's go. Kate's on night watch right now, watching a video. What? I was just saying you're on night watch right now. It's your shift. It's my shift. We've basically had the same night shift schedule since Anna left the boat two years ago. I do the 6 to 9 p.m. shift. Kate does 9 to midnight, Finn picks up midnight to 3 a.m., and Jack takes over 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Night shift just consists of keeping an eye on radar and potential traffic and nearby squalls, which typically contain high winds, which might require sail changes. Kate's probably the best. She keeps an eye on the radar. She keeps an eye on everything. The best. sails. How can you be? I don't know, because you're the only one that actually comes down to Dad and says, Hey, Dad, there's something on the radar. because I'm nervous if I break something or do something wrong. <laughs> eh, do, you unless, ever, uh, do you ever adjust sails? Oh, no, no. Maybe ah, that's... I've done it before by yeah. myself. But don't prefer to. I don't like it. Gotcha. Especially since we have the big sails up. Yeah. I don't like it. It's, not, it's, not, it's no fun. The reason the Somali pirates turned to piracy and, and quit fishing is because th their waters, they don't have a navy, they've never had a big navy. And so we just saw a Chinese fishing boat, big commercial Chinese boat. We've seen them all across the, off the coast of Australia, out in the middle of the Indian Ocean. They're just scavenging the world for fish. And you saw one coming, you know, 250 miles out. They were probably in more like 100 miles in, in, inland here, and they're hightailing it out of these waters. I wish you should have told me how to film this. And I would have, I would have. I told Jack to come here. I figured you'd have heard that, You're but you didn't. School. But anyway, and they just hightail it out. They're, they're running dark. They're not running AIS. The only reason we saw them is the radar. And they were just, and, and the minute they saw us, they, they took it off and they was going fast. And that's the problem out here is, is these Chinese just come out here and, and they just fish the waters and take everything they can get. So the I totally understand the Somali pirates and why they're pissed off at the world because nobody will patrol these waters and kick them stinking guys out of here. So this is day... Six, five, five, six, eighteen. Yeah, this, is, this is actually six. This is day eighteen. Down. We've been out here for so long, I can't feel my toes. The first bite's got them. I've hit heat stroke seventeen times. This land is like no other. That's why no one comes out here. So this has been a good crossing. We've had uh, very little cell changes. We've stayed on one tack basically the whole way. Wind's been solid. It was a little rough in the beginning, but we were going super fast and. Uh, 
we had the ASIM out, not the ASIM, but the Screecher out, code zero, and it got a little too windy. We're experiencing 20 knots average now. It's supposed to get up to 30. And uh, the sea state's in good state right behind us, so everything's going good. In order to drop the mainsail, we furl in the Genoa, turn the boat directly into the wind, drop the main, turn back on course, then put the Genoa back out again. Boat. Well, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it with binoculars. You might be able to see it without binoculars. Alright, it's getting a lot closer. And it's just right there on our port side. Let me see if I can talk to him on the radio. Fishing boat, fishing boat. Come in. And if we turn away from them, well, they've just been on the same course for the last two, three hours. You seeing a pig up? They're just on it. Are you called them? Yeah, they didn't. If they're dragging a net, how long is it behind their boat? No, it'd be maybe a half a mile, but they're not dragging net. They got everything stowed. They're they're getting out of these waters. They've either reached their limit on how much fish they can haul. And somewhere out there's a big processing ship where they take all that fish that they've got back out to a processing ship, process it, freeze it, and take it on, and then they'll come back here and, and, and snipe these waters poach these waters. They're watching Sailing Zatara videos, old ones. I'm on episode six. I don't know. Y'all not eating? I already ate. This is the reason we make videos, so they can go back and watch themselves. Hey, who's that? You know, I, we haven't done a, a voiceover in a really long time. I know I do them now. Why? I don't know. Cause Where were we at? It was too daunting getting y'all to try to do it. Exactly. Exactly. So that was first that. Polynesia. Bruh, we completely missed the clip. Completely. Another sail change. We're just rolling up the screecher. The sea state's not real good because of the current. I get 20 to 23 knots of wind. I don't want to blow it out. It's only my easy sail, my lazy man sail. So we're going to go a little slower tonight. Put out the Genoa. That's always a safe sail.
It's hard to tell on camera just how big these rolling waves are. Although we had beautifully consistent 23 knot winds, we also had this massive 3.6 knot current right on our nose. So we were basically swimming upstream. We crawled along at about five knots for the next few days. Even though I prefer the stability of our catamaran as opposed to our monohull from years ago, the rolling waves made it difficult to do simple daily chores like dishes and laundry. Luckily, we never encountered any pirates or terrorists or even any suspicious boats on this passage. But once we got near to Socotra, things really started to get interesting. Are you serious we don't have any sails out? Bear pulling it. We're getting here faster than I want to get here. We can't slow down. It's too hard to tack back and forth here because the waves are huge. We're going to get there at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be dark. We're going to be turning a corner. And are we going to be turning into rocks? The rocks aren't on the charts. That's the problem. Yeah. We can still have 40 knot winds. The last three days have been trying for sure. Oh. So the problem we're having now this morning is uh, this hatch, our emergency hatch. A seal has broken. There's a lot of water in there, Jack. Yeah, it's taking on a lot of water. Tune in next week as we navigate through one of the worst sailing experiences of our lives.